we, we are internally related to everything, yes. not externally related. Consciousness is an internal relationship to the whole. We take in the whole and we act toward the whole. And yes. that internal, whatever we have taken in, determines basically what we are. Well, you see, I think the difficulty is this fragmentation, first of all. Everybody is, uh, all thought is broken up into bits, like this nation, this country, this industry, this profession, and so on, as they can't meet. Right? And uh, it's extremely hard to break into that. Now, uh, the, the second, but that comes about primarily because thought has developed traditionally in a way such that it claims not to be affecting anything, but just telling you the way things are. Therefore, people cannot see that they are creating a problem and then apparently trying to solve it. That is, see, so let's take the problem, what problem do you like? Pollution, uh, the, the, or the ecology. See, the ecology is not in itself a problem. It works perfectly well by itself. It's due to us, right? Uh, it, it's a problem because we are thinking in, in a certain way by breaking everything up and each person's doing his own thing, right? Now, therefore, the ecological problem is due to thought, right? But thought thinks it is a problem out there and I must solve it. Now that doesn't make sense because simultaneously thought is doing all the activities which make the problem and then does another set of activities to try to overcome it. <laughs> you see, it doesn't stop doing the things which are making the ecological problem or the national problem or whatever the problem is. The earth is one household really. <laughs> yeah. We're not treating it that way, right? So that's the first step in economics is to say the earth is one household and all that it depends on. It's all one, you see. So. Uh, now, the implicate order would help us to see that, to see everything unfolds everything. <laughs> that everybody not merely depends on everybody, but actually everybody is everybody in a deeper sense. See, we are the earth because all our substance comes from the earth and goes back. I mean, it's, it's wrong to say it's an environment, you see, just yeah. surrounding us, because that would be like trying the brain regarding the stomach as part of its environment. <laughs> the root of the word compassion, you see, to feel together. and. Uh, if people feel, have the same feeling together, are responsible for each other, then you have compassion. And you don't think it's part of, what's the word, original sin, that human beings in their very nature compete? Well, I don't think that there is such thing as original sin, and uh, uh, I think it has developed more and more with the growth of our society, that there's no evidence that people in the hunter-gatherer society were all that competitive. But the, the more you made society big and you had organization and you had to get to the top, mm -hmm. the people on the bottom would suffer. There was a drive to compete, naturally. And do you think that perhaps the desire to compete is a weakness? Uh, not a weakness, that's, that's a mistake. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing we have to do for, in the long run is to look at our whole way of thinking, which has developed over so many thousands of years. I don't think it was the original way of thinking of the human race at all, but for many c complex reasons it came about. Now, uh, that means that people have to make a, uh, uh, they have to participate to make a cooperative effort to have a dialogue, a real dialogue in which we will <coughs> not merely exchange opinions, but actually listen deeply to the views of other people without resistance. And we cannot do this if we hold to our own opinion and resist the other. As it doesn't mean we should accept the other, but we have to be able to look at all the opinions as suspended, as it were, in front of us without carrying them out, without suppressing them. Yes. It's but this wholeness, this new consciousness, this wholeness, is that something that you can only glimpse, um, perhaps in, like, as you might have a glimpse of heaven, or is it something scientific? I mean, can, no, you, can you think your way through it? Not really, completely. The wholeness is an attitude or an approach, but it can be given a scientific uh, uh, realization, you see. Because of relativity and quantum theory, we can, if we wish, look on the world as a whole. Consciousness is really our most immediate uh, experience of, of this implicate order. And you might think of nets of consciousness that are finer and finer or we may think of capturing finer and finer aspects of the implicate order. Right? I think there's an, an intelligence that's, uh, Im that's Im implicit there, you see, to say uh, that uh, a kind of intelligence <laughs> unfolds. Right? Yeah. The source of intelligence is not necessarily in the brain, you see, uh, the ultimate source, all the, but uh, much more uh, enfolded into the whole. Right? Now, uh, 
the question whether you want to call it God, that depends on what you mean by the word, you see, because uh, uh, taking it as a personal God might restrict it in some way. I think science has begun to replace religion as the major source of, of the world view. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, therefore, if science takes a fragmentary world view, it will have a profound effect on consciousness. But science is always seen as measurement. Is that no longer true? Well, science is whatever people make of it. You see, science has changed over the ages, and it's different now from a few hundred years ago, and it could be different again. Now, there's no intrinsic reason why science must necessarily be measurement. This is a, another historical development which has come about over the past few centuries. It's entirely contingent and not absolutely necessary. And when Einstein produced his special theory, yeah. which the Times newspaper of London dismissed yeah. as being nonsense, um, was he moving towards wholeness? Yes, he definitely was. Uh, as, uh, he moved eventually toward a view of field theory where everything was one field, uh, all the fields merging. So it was a step toward wholeness, although not, you know, it was a limited step, but still it was the beginning. And if we get to wholeness, are we then in heaven? I mean, where else is there to go? Right, we'll never get there, you see. <laughs> it's not a place you can get. <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, wholeness, I say, is a kind of attitude or a, uh, an approach uh, to the whole of life, uh, it's, it's a way, if we can have a coherent approach to reality, then reality will respond coherently to us. <laughs> but nature has been tremendously affected by our way of thinking on the earth. Uh, nature is now being destroyed. There's very little in, left on the earth which wasn't affected by how we were thinking. And if we have coherence, in what way will our behavior be seen to be different? Well, we won't be, we will produce the results we intend rather than the results we don't intend. Yes. That's the first big change. Um, then we will be more orderly, harmonious, you know, we will be happier. I think we could put all that in there. But, but the first, the major source of unhappiness is that we are incoherent and therefore producing results that we don't really want. And then trying to overcome them or we keep on producing them.